Um, human physiology is where you're at. Obviously. Do I like follow That's it? All right. no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can hear my voice and it's okay. focused up here, I'll be in and out and all over the place. But, but to you ask about the hybrid zone. Last semester I started doing this and placing video lectures online, and hopefully well, this summer I'll have everything ready to go and physiology hybrid would be the same starting this summer. But anyway, uh, by the time I got all of it figured out how to do it and stuff, it was uh, there were seven or eight or nine lectures in the last semester, so I got to take those first few lectures this semester. This is just introductory. We'd be lucky to get everything covered we need to, to on the syllabus today. But I don't print syllabi out because you can waste a lot of paper that way. It's online. You can print it out yourself if you want to carry it around with you, or you can, most people's got it in, in some kind of little computer or phone in their hand. They can look at it anytime they want to. So you can go out, as you saw, to the Carl Iver web page, find my name. It's down there. Click on it, my home page, and there it is, physiology. You'll also notice out here on the side, tissue study, a brain study, uh, the fetal pig and frog is for zoology, heart and kidney study, and mitosis study. All those are places you'll go, you'll revert back to as we cover some of those in lab to study them by as we have lab tests off of those things. So those are all out there on the same, same website. Our textbook, I see one textbook there. Uh, I don't even remember what edition. Is it 13th edition? 12th. 12th edition. Uh, they have a 13th edition out, but I switch every other edition, so I'll switch on the 14th edition when it comes out. Very little difference. If you have a 10th edition, it'll probably work. There's just a few pages difference, but the information's almost identical. Uh, those things work pretty well. We have two lab books. Um, one, we use all of it, and the other one, we'll use as much as we can. We get a little bit limited in time. This semester, I see time limitations really fast. I typically would start lab next week, not going to happen. We're out Monday. We just get in and we're out. I think that'll end after, after this year. Uh, we never did that till four or five years ago and, uh, and that's going to end again. But then we turn around and Easter break this year is not on Good Friday. Uh, the last three or four or five years we've taken Thursday and Friday for Easter break. And uh, before that we took Friday and Monday. Now we're taking Monday and Tuesday after Easter. So that kills another set of labs for me. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but it's a messed up schedule. So, and their theory was we have spring break, we come back for three days and we're out Thursday and Friday again. They want us to come back for a full week and then we can take some time off the following week. I don't know. Anyway, uh, human physiology, uh, we're going to study the function of the human body. Hopefully most of y'all are either in or have had anatomy. Anybody not had anatomy or not in anatomy? It's possible to survive this without anatomy. It's just nice to, <laughs> it's just nice to have a background. And uh, anatomy background is kind of understanding and knowing the structure. This is the function of that structure. So they have to learn some structure along with, with function as we go. We do a lot of uh, uh, critical thinking stuff, uh, a lot of application questions. Uh, I'll give you scenarios. I like to make up questions, and I come up with a new one every now and then. I may revamp the whole test, who knows, but now don't give me the attitude on the front <laughs> row already. <clears throat> you may not like the questions, but you can't help to laugh at the end of them, because I try to put some humor in them too. There's one question that starts on test one and won't actually end until you take the final. It's an ongoing question because there's ongoing physiological problems with these situations. That the, and these are actually real life people. They're just people I've had in class and like to pick on. And, and I don't use uh, last names, uh, <laughs> just first names. And I have some that you'll, you may actually run into them and they'll say, How'd you like my physiology question on the test? Because <laughs> they know it was them. But anyway, uh, I usually ask permission before I torture you on the test question. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> as far as this course goes, uh, as long as my voice holds out, I haven't had this trouble in several years, but 
when I read y'all's roster in, the, in my office two or three days ago, I immediately started getting sick. Uh, so I'm going to try to hold out as long as I can. I recognize too many names on this roster was the problem. It'll be a lecture, and by looking at this class, I'm going to say we're going to have quite a bit of discussion because I know enough of you that there'll be some questions in there. But I encourage discussion. Uh, we'll talk through situations. Uh, we'll try to make application as many places as we can. But this is going to tell you the lab books, which you can share. And, of course, your lecture book is the 12th edition that we're in right now. But the lab books you can share in a group of two or three. We'll do our labs right here in this room as well. But two or, no more than three. Don't come ask me if a fourth person can get in there because they can't. Uh, if you have a fourth person and you four split up and do two twos, that, that's, just, that's just my rule. I think too many gets in a group and too many gets lazy. And one or two ends up doing the work anyway. So and if you push me, I'll cut it down to one. Everybody will do it. So that's just a rule. And I'm going to stick with it. <clears throat> There's the course description. It's uh, three hours lecture, uh, lecture, two hours lab. Course objectives, you can read through those. Course outcomes, I can't tell much difference in those. They're just a little more elaborate. And there's the teaching format, is uh, lecture, discussion. I started something last semester. I'll probably do some again this semester. And those of you that had me last semester, we did some presentations. And, I, and I, we did kind of a small presentation and a large presentation in zoology. And I think physiology, we just did one big presentation. That's probably what we'll do in here. But we'll pick a topic somewhere down the line. It won't be immediate. And I'll give you a couple, at least two weeks probably, to get it ready. But, and I may even let you pick a topic out of here. But uh, you'll do about a 10-minute presentation. Typically, you'll have a partner. So, and I'll explain more of that as we get into it. Evaluation techniques are six tests. My tests are multiple choice, true, false. Uh, occasionally, I'll have an essay question in there. On the essay question, uh, if, if you don't know exactly what it is and exactly know how to answer it, it's because you haven't been in class. Um, if you didn't come to class, then you won't have those answers. Coming to class is essential to pass in this class. I, I truly believe that. So the six test, I'll try to give you plenty of advance notice uh, so we can plan for that. Don't wait to not four start studying. That's not a good survival mode. <clears throat> the lecture makes up about 75% of your overall grade and the lab makes up about 25%. But that's not to take the lab lightly. It's not difficult, although you will spend some time in it. Uh, if you do it, get it in on time, it'll make a significant difference in your grade. If you choose not to do it, you'll notice that significant difference in your grade. Uh, again, it's not hard. You know, you know exactly what you're to do, and you'll have plenty, ample time to get it done. A lot of times I'll make the assignment and say it's due a week from tomorrow, or two weeks. Or usually if I assign it in lab, it'll be due in lab. And just have it ready to turn in then. It's the late papers that typically kill people because they get so late they forget to turn them in. Or they just didn't do them to start with. Get them turned in on time, I, I lose less. If you start throwing them at me at, on, on your time frame and not mine, then there's a lot of stuff gets lost. I found papers in my book from two semesters ago. And I, said, Ooh, I wonder how that affected them. You know, so you do your job, I'll do mine. I do post grades, so you can keep up. If you know for a fact you turn a paper in, uh, check that. And if it's not up there, ask me, because uh, it's somewhere. <laughs> we'll try to track it down, but, but there's a lot of papers across my desk, lab papers. So I usually post right over there on the far side of the board, so every time you come to class, you can look. Now, I don't post every day. I don't post every week. I post after every major test, every lecture exam. At that point, it should catch up all the labs in between. So you'll know now, if there's a lab turned in the day before, and we're taking the lecture test today, and I'll post later today, that lab may not get in there. My work study comes in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, and that's when things will get put in, this, in the system. 
All right. Uh, it says up there, I will not take late assignments. Uh, don't abuse the situation here. I'll work with you up to the last couple weeks of school, and then you forget even asking because we're, we're down to getting it all in the system and getting it printed out. So at that point, it's too late. Just don't wait to that, that point to get serious about the class because it's already probably too late for you anyway. Start at the beginning, work hard all the way through. It's much easier to, to cruise out the other end than to, than to spend 24-7 at the end to try to make up. Um, let's see, lab. Pretty much got that covered. Working in groups of two or three. This lab is Monday afternoons, right? It's when it's scheduled, so y'all be in here uh, a week from Monday, I guess, because You'll be enjoying Martin Luther King Day right away. <laughs> but we'll start lab. It's the first available lab. We'll start up. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Grading scale is pretty simple. And that 90 is, is and can be an 89.5. 89.4 is falling in the next category. And an 80 is a B just like an 88 is a B. So if you're going to make an 88, make a little extra effort and go ahead and pull an A. That, those are the... It's like a sharp dagger when you make it 88.9. That close, but it's still B. Okay, so it's 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 just a basic grading skill. There's the attendance policy. We used to we used to drop people if, if their attendance was bad or if they just wasn't getting the work done and it's so far behind, we knew they wasn't gonna catch up, we used to drop you for you. Uh, we can't do it anymore. Uh, some rules, regulations, laws, Lord, I can't keep up with all of it anymore. They just told me I can't do it anymore, which is really a relief to me because I never thought I should've been doing what you should've been doing anyway. So it's your responsibility. I had a person last semester, was here the very first day of class. I could not drop them as a no-show, she was here the first day of class. I never saw her again. She's still on her roster at the end of the semester. What did I have to give her? I had to give her an F. I had no choice. I uh, absolutely hate doing that because I know that probably wasn't her intentions, but I sure wish she would have dropped the class. Uh, makeup exams. A little bit of a pet peeve for me because this, this can get really tedious throughout the semester. If as many students as I have, if several of them start missing tests and then want to make up tests, and make up tests, it's been all my spare time making up tests. I don't like to do make up tests, but I do schedule the last lab of the semester for that. So if you miss test one, you have a place and a time to take that, be the last lab of the semester. Um, and that's a pretty long time frame to have to wait, but you still have an opportunity to make it up for whatever reason you may miss. It could be illness. Or we're not gonna just shut you down on that. Uh, it mentions there that there not be a curve or a bonus on makeup exams, and that's not to say that every test will have a curve on it. I go by class average, and I can tell you some tests probably require more of a curve than others, but I seldom give more than five points on any, on any of them. But if you take a makeup test, you lose the opportunity for that curve. It's just, Somewhat of a deterrence I tried to put in there. Now notice in bold print, I do not drop the lowest lecture test grade. Uh, people will assume that through the whole semester and say, oh, I didn't do very good on that. But you dropped the lowest, right? No. I dropped the lowest lab grade. If you missed a lab grade or you bombed a lab test, forget about it, move on. We've still got a lot of work to do in lab. We can't go back and try to make that up. But I dropped the lowest lab grade, it's automatically dropped in a formula in the computer, but I do not drop the lecture grade, okay? If you think you need assistance as far as uh, tutors, you can check the Learning Resource Center. They usually try to get somebody on staff that, that can help. A lot of times I think you'll find some of your best tutors are actually classmates that's in the same class. Uh, pay close attention to who makes the top grade on the first couple tests. Immediately you found your tutor. You'll learn something from them, just maybe they study slightly different, maybe they look at it a little different, a little different angle, and you may actually help them a little bit 
from your other angles. Now that other deal there is this uh, Disabilities Act. Uh, uh, you can read through that. But if you qualify for any of that, come to me and let's talk. The counseling deal, this kind of goes where, where I used to be in my other room. My, the other building in Johnson Hall over there, I used to be in an office right on the hallway. Anybody, any of y'all remember that building? Been around, you been around that long? No, my <laughs> sister. <clears throat> Seemingly, being right on the hallway, I, I just look like a counselor waiting, sitting there just to counsel people as they walk up and down the hall. They just love to walk in, plop down. Tell me about Uncle Joe and Aunt Susie getting a divorce and it messed up mom and dad's messed up now. So dad started drinking because of it, you know. And I, by the time I got done with them, they just walked out in the street and stood there till the next truck come by. I mean, you don't want me to counsel you. So I'm not a counselor. I, I will say, in this building, when somebody comes to my office, we have a grade or something to talk about, something about the class, because they don't make special effort just to walk all the way over to this building and walk up to the second floor and come into my office just to sit down and yap. So I do like that aspect. But if you have any questions about this class, that's what my office hours are for. Uh, is to talk about what we're doing in here. So I'm not a counselor. In fact, I put the extension to our on-campus counselor on there so you can go straight to her. She'll take care of you. This is kind of the, what, what we're covering. There's only two chapters we don't cover. One of them may even be listed on here, but I've never actually gotten it covered. Uh, chapter... Four and chapter 19, 19 is actually listed on here. We actually cover significant parts of four because so many of these chapters overlap each other you can't help it just a little bit. <coughs> and, uh, and there's parts of 19 we actually cover because it's in other parts of chapter. There'll be things we'll talk about three or four different times because you'll find these systems are connected. If one system starts going down, it's going to drag another system down. That's, that's part of what we're going to try to understand. We'll talk about a, a system called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It's one I give essay questions over quite a bit from time to time. And that system, we'll see it in the hormone chapter, which will be on test two. We'll see it in the heart chapter. We'll see it in the kidney chapter. Uh, there's at least three chapters it'll show up in, and each time they'll explain it. Uh, maybe a little different angle each time. But Hopefully, eventually, we'll get it. <laughs> but <clears throat> all these, you'll start seeing them build on each other. We cover the hormone chapter pretty quick. I think it's on test two. But all these chapters you'll go through will talk about individual hormones that belong in that system. So there's a lot of overlap. And my final is not comprehensive, but it is. It, it creates its own comprehensive capabilities. And uh, uh, there's no way around that. So the more you learn as you go, the easier toward the end will get. Although there's new topics we'll bring into that. But the labs can vary a little bit. The lab assignments are up there, but I try to correspond our labs with, with class. If we're a little ahead in the lab and a little behind in class, that's when we'll do a case history. We'll stall to let class catch up to lab. I don't know how much stalling there's going to be this semester. We're already missing two labs. I already know there's two missing. But we do get all the lab work done. Uh, at the end, I do a uh, genetics lab. That lab, it's a little handout I give you. And if you're here, you make a 100 on it because we work through the whole thing before you leave that day. If you're not here, you make a zero, and there is no makeup. So it's an easy grade, but if you miss, it's a rough one. The makeup exams are in the last schedule lab of the semester, so I call it dead week, the week before finals, when all other instructors are just hammering you with 14 chapters and homework because they loaf through the semester, we'll be pretty much done. We may have a little bit of lecture left, but as far as assignments, we're cleaning up the mess and getting ready for finals week. I guess I'm enough old school that I still remember old term. Dead week was an old terminology used in my day that that's when you studied your butt off. Uh, pretty much everybody was done. You're just getting ready for finals test, and they gave you that week to study. You probably have a test, some, and so one of your class, somebody be giving you a test, and turn around the next week give you a final. You've had it before, haven't you? Yeah, it's not supposed to work that way, but you never know. <clears throat> so you can look that up and kind of keep up with us there. 
Just a few reminders underneath that. Get your papers turned in on time. Make sure your group has turned them in. You know, if somebody in your group is supposed to turn them in, it's still your paper, it's still your responsibility. So make sure it gets turned in. Uh, check in periodically. In other words, check your uh, or a post grades. Check it periodically. Make sure you're not missing anything. And again, I'm going to post after every major exam, every lecture exam, not not lab exams, lecture exams. As far as supplies go, uh, everything we're going to look at in lab is already dissected. I'll put it on the overhead, shoot it up here. We'll go over every little entity that you need to know and we'll have a test over the next week, whether it's a brain, spinal cord, whether it's a heart, uh, the tissues and mitosis that we'll do first. Uh, I'll give you mock tests the week before, I mean, just like the test is going to be. And if, I mean, if you don't know it, you just chose not to study it. Academic integrity, uh, all I can say is don't get caught cheating. If you can live with yourself and cheat and not get caught, then you go for it. But if you get caught cheating, it gets ugly as none of us tolerate it very well. And uh, typically one of two things happen. Not only will you get a zero on that exam, you'll probably be asked to leave the class. And if it's bad enough, by the handbook of Carl Albert, they can remove you from the school. So you could lose all opportunity to get a degree here. So it's not worth it. You spend as much time preparing to cheat as you could just prepare to actually learn the stuff and make something out of yourself. So that's the whole goal. I put a great appeal in here because uh, I think uh, Dr. Yates won us to a few years ago, kind of the channels to go through, talk to me first, we don't get it worked out, you go to my boss, which is Jerry Holton, the department chair, doesn't work out there, you go to Dr. Yates, and if he'll probably advise you to file the proper paperwork to do a, a great appeal. So, And I used to sit on the appeals committee, it is a very fair committee, and they will look at it. <coughs> I try not to have any secrets at the end of the semester. Going into the final, you'll know what your grade is. So if there's a problem, we should have already run across it or worked it out by that point. Uh, class behavior, you're just expected to be an adult. I haven't thrown anybody out of class in years, but I, I'm still capable of it. Uh, no tobacco products. Uh, even in this brand new building, I've had them try to sit back there and spit in the bottle. Don't do that. I don't want any tobacco of any kind, and I'm so proud to be on the second floor of a building a long ways from outside doors, because I still have lung damage from that other building, because they'd, they'd have a smoking can right outside the outside doors, and you're not supposed to smoke within 25 feet of an entrance of a building. And uh, it sat right there, and every time the door opened, smoke come right in my office. It just had my name all over it. In fact, I think they blew rings that said Daniel. on it. They'd come in there and attack me, but I don't do well around cigarette smoke, but uh, needless to say, uh, it's a smoke-free campus now, so. All right, everybody's favorite thing here, cell phones and computers. Anybody plan on bringing a laptop and taking notes by way of laptop? Occasionally I'll get one that does that. It typically doesn't work very well because uh, I may have stuff on the board, I may have stuff overhead, I may be Compare, well, most of the time I do compare back and forth to the book. I say, well, this is what the book says. This is what, I may even tell you what Paul Harvey said before he died. So, hey, he was a massive information. <laughs> but as far as uh, computers go, the only thing we've run in with that is somebody be sitting back there looking like they're taking notes, but they're looking at stuff they shouldn't be looking at, and they're not paying attention at all. So we actually discourage the laptops in class. Too much Wi-Fi availability. The cell phones, uh, y'all probably already heard my cell phone go off two or three times standing here, just buzzing. It's like my family and friends have no idea that I actually work. And they ring me and buzz me all the time. Most of the time I won't answer. But occasionally I'll be expecting an important call. I may answer, I may look at my phone and, oh, and walk out and take it. I'm not as big a sticker. Mr. Holton's love will pull a gun out and shoot you. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just big time stickler, and every time we we try to catch him all the time, we, if he ever has his phone on him in class, one of us will be calling him just to, just to tick him off. But, but he usually leaves it in his office, I will say that. If you're expecting an important phone call, 
and just ease up and go take it and be done with it. Um, if you're not, and turn them off, put them on silent, ring, whatever. Don't put them on uh, vibrate and set them on the desk. Or, but some of y'all forget to turn them off and you have these funky ringtones. We'll get a laugh out of that, but typically we just keep moving on. I don't make that big a deal out of it. Now, I don't want you sitting back there texting in class, because uh, if you're texting, you're not paying attention. If somebody's bugging you with a text, send them a text, say, I'm in class, later, and then leave it alone, okay? Now, I won't tolerate a lot of texting without asking you about it later, at some point. So there's the cell phone issue. Uh, emails is a good way to get a hold of me. I'll check my emails at least a couple times a day. Uh, you can call my office phone. That's not the place I'm at most of the time. I'm either in class or in lab during the week when I'm up here. You can leave a message, and I will eventually get back to you, but that's usually the last <coughs> place that, I, that I'll check and get back to. If it's something important, I may look up your phone number. There's occasionally I'll run into something that for instance, a couple of my tests will have an odd number of questions. Well, they get finished this page and they, they didn't turn over the last page and they, they leave eight questions blank on the test. Well, I don't realize it till I run them through the scanner. I may need to get a hold of you right away, so I may go in there, look up your phone number, whatever you have listed, and try to get a hold of you and say, get back up here and answer these last eight questions. So. In that case, I may not send you. If I can't get a hold of you, I may send it by way of email. But uh, I, I'm not one to spend a lot of time hunting down emails and sending students a lot of stuff. If I'm trying to get a hold of you, it's probably pretty important. Disclaimer, I've got this on all of them because something like this has happened before. You should not capture live animals to dissect at home and, and not say it was... Uh, for the best of your educational experience at Carl Albert State College. Now, if you want to dissect your own live animal on your own, don't mention Carl Albert State College. I don't need to know about any of that. But don't say, oh, well, we was dissecting uh, pigs up there at uh, Carl Albert, and I just thought I'd shoot my neighbor's pig and see what this real pig was like. But don't say Carl Albert anywhere in that conversation. Because I've got a disclaimer that says, I'm telling you don't do that. The neighbor's going to be upset. Now, if you can find a pig anywhere on my land and shoot it, I'll probably uh, pat you on the back and say, good job, because I don't like pigs, especially the wild ones. <laughs> all right, uh, the capstone, uh, how many of y'all in allied health? Okay, so y'all be in the allied health capstone. How many of y'all in biology, zoology? None of that, don't have any of y'all in that. Education, gonna be a doctor. Pediatrician, bum. Okay. No, none of y'all be in that capstone. Then. <coughs> There's just some student outcomes. That's all that's left on there, and you can read through those. I, I, they want us to have outcomes, objectives, goals. I, I, to me, it's all one same thing. I don't know what it's all coming. Anyway, down at the bottom, if you go on there, it says there's a place for comments, but uh, I made sure it said, you have no permission to add comments, so I'll just leave that alone. I don't <laughs> You'll get a chance to give those later. Does anybody have any questions at this point? <clears throat> One thing I'm going to get out of the way today is lab stuff. Because I can never remember to do it in lab. Pass around. Everybody gets one. <coughs> Take one of those and pass around. And all this is is a safety lab agreement. And the safety lab agreement basically says don't be stupid in lab. Don't do anything that you're not supposed to be doing, like uh, playing with fire, playing with explosives, building stuff that's illegal. Uh, oh. Horse play is a big one uh, in any lab, especially upstairs in the chemistry labs and stuff. In here, I have all the lab stuff we need in here. It's all pretty simple, cut and dried. You know, we'll use eye charts, stigmatism charts. Gosh, whatever else we need, I've got it. And uh, come in, get it done, get out. 
And it's all a lab agreement saying there's a lot of chemical stuff on this lab agreement which you really won't deal with. Now, if we look at a specimen, a heart or a kidney or something, and you want to come back in and look at it, you're more than welcome to do so. But you'll want to use goggles and gloves to do so. I usually keep a box of gloves in here. I don't have any goggles, but the safety standard says you need goggles to do so. But I don't have a problem with you coming back and looking at the real thing. briefly go over this. Practicing good laboratory safety techniques, basically. Uh, and, and you sure would, this is more emphasis in the chemistry stuff than it is in anything else, but even in the zoo labs, the biology labs, where we do, do some actual hands-on dissection, we cut open some sharks last year, then yeah. we, uh, we delivered baby sharks. We did that in the summer, too, didn't we? Yeah. So far, I've been able to, to get at least one pregnant female shark in the deal, and so we've delivered as many as six babies from, from those. But, you know, proper technique is basically don't cut your hand, don't cut your throat, don't cut your ear off, you know, don't... Don't touch your neighbor. Yeah, you know, don't, don't pester the person with a knife from the other person's perspective, you know. This general rules, conduct yourself responsible. You're all adults, so to conduct yourself responsible, Follow written and verbal instructions. It's the first thing I'll do is tell you exactly what you need to do, and then I'll let you go do it. And you work more in a group setting. Uh, you work in, in fact, groups can help groups, and people can help people in a lab setting. And I'm not saying groups can cheat off groups and people can cheat off people. I'm saying you can help people. Where'd you find this? Well, I found it on page so and so. Well, that's fine. I'll be in and out to help, mostly in and out, but occasionally I may be out of pocket. But I'm here to help you. It says no food and drink. Water's fine. I really don't want you to bring, especially cups of pop and things that's going to stain the carpet. If you spill water, it'll dry eventually. But a bottle of water's fine. A bag of crackers or something, that's not going to bother. They'll vacuum it up. It's not that big a deal as far as food goes. Now, the other labs, you don't want to eat anything in there. You, you don't want to lay anything on those lab tables. You don't. We just dissected a shark. So. Now we try to clean that up, but some people don't clean very well. Do not eat food and drink, so that's unauthorized experiments. You know, creating a bomb or you know something small like that would be unauthorized. No horseplay. Good housekeeping practices. Uh, safety equipment. As far as safety equipment in here, we really don't have anything to be safe from because you're not going to be handling a knife. I've done all that for you. No chemicals to deal with, no fume hood to deal with, no glassware. We return all equipment. I've got most of it in boxes and stuff. When we're doing certain experiments, I'll lay the boxes out and get done with it, put it back. It's not, it's not that hard. We don't have burners to deal with, test tubes to deal with, uh, no hot objects. Uh, <laughs> Number 19 just kills me, but it actually has happened. All chemicals are considered to be dangerous. Do not touch, taste, or smell any chemicals unless specifically instructed to do so. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all remember Mr. Hebert that used to teach out here. You remember Mr. Hebert? Classic guy. He was teaching a GPS class one time, and he took him down to the chemistry lab and was doing one of his classic experiments. He loved to blow up stuff and mix things together and make colors and flames and all, but he did it properly under the fume hood. Well, he, he had three or four chemicals laid out. He was telling them this is potassium chloride, and this is whatever, and this is basically sugar, and potassium chloride, same thing as light salt, but we're going to mix these together, and 
burn the sugar. Well, he turns around and there's the guy behind him in the class. He reaches down and tests some chloride with his finger. Well, I mean, it's an impure form of light salt, but uh, and it wasn't going to kill him. But what if it was something that the Hebert looked at him and said, Boy, you're dumb as dirt. I just told you not to do that. And that's always stuck to me. Boy, you're dumb as dirt. Yeah, you ought to be dumb as dirt to stick your finger in a bottle of chemicals and take a whack at it. Don't let me catch you drinking this fluid off these specimens over here, okay? Uh, you'll pickle yourself inside out <clears throat> if you survive it because it's got a little bit of antifreeze in it. It'll probably destroy your kidneys and you won't live very long. So that's not healthy. Now to breathe it, you won't be around enough to breathe it. So, All right. Uh, 19 just always sticks out and kills me. If, if, you're, if you're pregnant, it's not going to be that big a deal in here. Uh, simply because you're not going to be just hovering over the specimens. In zoology, we were right, right there hovering over the specimens, and that concerns me a little bit if you're pregnant. We're going to try to get you more fresh air. So. Uh, clothing, uh, in here it's not, not that big a deal. In Zolab, I don't recommend any good clothing. I recommend the girls to put your hair up so you, when you're not leaning over the pan, uh, your hair is dripping in uh, frog juice or something, and, and you keep smelling something on the way home. What is that? You know, well, it's on your hair. Uh, if you have your hair up, you won't have that problem. Uh, don't worry about contact lenses in here. We shouldn't have any accidents and injuries. How many uh, accident prone people in here? Because I need to know that up front, so I just kind of keep an extra eye on you. Uh, before leaving the lab, always put everything up where you got it. Uh, and up there in those labs, we do disinfect and clean and spray down and wash up. And, and but in here, you want to have it on your table. So if you don't have any questions, sign that second sheet and pass those up to the front. You're more than welcome to keep the first sheet so you'll have a copy. In fact, I prefer that you did. test those notes will we'll start going over those Friday we'll be full fledged in the lecture Friday there are other things in there that we'll refer back to as we go through the semester reference back to I know chapter 6 has some notes in there which is part of test 2 and, and there's some uh, notes for 13 and 14 in there so hang on to that because we'll utilize that whole package for it's over with and, and hopefully this first test is a review from zoology, and that's basically all it is. So we won't spend a lot of time reviewing for zoology. But we have a lot of time we need to spend off into the system, so we'll uh, zip through this first test. And I'd venture to say not next week, but the following week will be your first test. So, yeah, this is a review of zoology, so it's, we're just going to refresh your memory a little bit. Fair warning, huh? All right. You have any questions? If you develop questions between now and Friday, bring them, ask them, and we'll try to get them answered. Yes. Punch that red button. And what a wonderful day.